Hi everyone, it's Eric from Drupal for Anyone, and today we're going to talk about adjusting image locations. So this is about getting those images in the right place on any kind of posts, whether it be a blog post or a regular page. And we get a lot of questions, uh, people asking, you know, I've got my image on the left side, I've got image on the right, you know, how do I get the text to flow around it, how do I get it to be a little lower, a little higher. Of course the answer to this is using CSS. So we're not going to get into a lot of CSS today, we're just going to look at a tiny, tiny little bit, but we're going to see how you can implement that easily on your pre-existing Drupal 7 site. Of course, if you're moving into Drupal 8, this is going to be a very similar process, so go ahead and pay attention. Now there are a few things you're going to need. The first is, of course, you're going to need a Drupal 7 website. Next, you're going to need some type of content that has an image. So you need a content type with an image field is how we're doing this. We're going to boot up the old um, blog module here. This is the one that comes with Drupal 7. I don't normally use this myself. I build my own custom blog module, and you can check out my website to see how I do that. But for now, we're going to use the built-in blog module, and we're going to add an image field to it so we can use for our example. Then you're going to need some way to access the CSS files on your site. And usually we do this through our theme. But because we're assuming you know very little about CSS, we know you assume you, you know very little about your theme, we're going to use a module called the CSS Injector, which is going to make this much easier. Next, we're going to need some kind of code, HTML, CSS type inspector. I'm going to use Firebug. I'm going to use Firebug for Firefox, and we'll show you how to do that. There is Firebug, uh, Firebug for Google Chrome. And uh, Google Chrome has its own inspector as well. I'm really not crazy about those, so I'm going to stick to using Firebug for Firefox just because I think it's the most straightforward, and you'll see why. And then beyond that, you're just going to need a little bit of patience because you might have to fiddle around with a little bit if you don't have really great CSS skills. But again, that's okay. So we're going to build this on my website that's already running. And this is, of course, assuming you probably already have your own site running. You probably have some type of blog installed already. But you just want to move around those images. Again, it doesn't have to be a blog. It could be um, any other type of content that has images, uh, especially in a field. And you'll see what that means as we keep going along. So don't worry about that. Now, the modules that we're going to install, let's look at those first. So Drupal comes with the blog module already built in so it's turned off by default but you can turn that on so I'm just gonna go ahead and enable the blog module and save the next thing we want to do is install the CSS injector module so I already have it open in a tab here on Drupal and you can find it at uh, drupal.org backslash project backslash CSS underscore injector or if you're lazy like me you just go to uh, google.com search CSS Injector Drupal, you'll find the link to this module. Okay, so we're using the Drupal 7 version, so what I'm going to do is just copy the zip here, the link, copy link location, then I'm going to go back over to my modules and just choose install new module. Then I want to install it from a URL and I can just paste that in there and then I'm just going to click install. I already have this module installed so I'm not going to do it again but that's just the simple way to get that done if you don't know how. And then let's keep moving on. So we'll go back to our modules list here and the module I'm looking for is the CSS injector module and as you can see I already have this one turned on as well. And once that's done you can hit configure and now we have it open. You can see that I've actually already used this module before. I have two CSS files already going. One's called blog posts. So this is not what we're doing today. This is my already existing blog. Okay, so what other tools do we need here? Next, we're going to need Firebug. So this is an add-on for Firefox. So you could think of this as just like a DLC or some uh, an app for your browser and in this case I'm using Firefox and to find this again just go to google.com search the word 
firebug for Firefox, and you'll be able to find it here. Then you're just going to choose Add to Firefox. Again, I've already actually got this installed, so I'm not going to do it again, but you just click here, and then that's all you need to do to set it up. The last thing we're going to need here is we're going to need some kind of um, Ipsum lorem types text, and I'm going to use this website called Bacon Ipsum. And uh, what it does is just generate some useless text for me so I can fill it into my blogs so we can just see how it looks. So you can go to any kind of website you want and just copy off some text and that's all good. Okay, so back to our website. Now we've got the blog module installed, turned on. We've got CSS injector installed, turned on. We've got Firebug for Firefox going. Okay. Once we have the blog module installed, it's going to add a new content type to our website. So just make sure you refresh the page once. Then when you check out content, add content, you're going to find a new one called blog entry. So we want to change up this blog entry a little bit because by default the blog entry doesn't have an image field in it. And I really like to use the image field. Okay. So I'm going to just choose structure. Um, content type and then use that blog entry and again if you don't have the administration toolbar installed your administration toolbar might look a tiny bit different than mine so you might have to hunt and dig a little bit or install the admin toolbar here but you should be able to find it just the same okay so we've got blog entry and a description blah 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 um, I don't like mine being uh, published to the front page by default, so I'm just going to uncheck that. And then we need to edit again. So blog entry, I'm going to choose manage fields. Okay, so we just need to add an image field here because we already have a title for the blog, we already have our XML sitemap, some URL stuff, and we have the body, but we have nowhere to put an image as a field. So for the field type, I'm going to choose image because we want an image and the widget type is going to be image it's the only one we have and then we have to give the field a name so I'm going to call this um, custom image okay you can call this whatever you want and then I'm just going to save that and they're going to ask us some questions about this and I'm just going to have this as a public image so you really don't need to worry about any of this for now just save it and now it gives us a chance to give it a different label. So I'm not gonna I'm just gonna call it image. I don't need it to be called custom image. And I don't want it to be required. I like having these things optional. So for some help tough, I'm gonna say, you know, add your blog image here. And um, it's gonna allow for a, either a PNG, a GIF, JPEG, a file directory. I wanna put this in a file directory called custom image yep and we'll allow for a title an alt one image and save okay so now we have an image and um, I'm just gonna reorganize this here it's a little messy so I got title body and I want the image above that so title image body save Now let's go ahead and make some content. So I'm just going to go content, add content, blog entry. Okay, so now we have here our title, our image, and our body. And our other nonsense. Then we just save it when we're done. So let's give this a try and see what comes out. So I'm going to call this bacon. And I'm going to jump back to my bacon ipsum. Grab some content here. And just copy and paste this into our blog. Then I'm going to grab an image from my computer. Got this nice picture of a dog. We're going to call this um, Dog Who Loves Bacon. Okay, and now we have our blog entry done. Let's go ahead and save this. 
And there we go. <clears throat> so you, some of you may be at this point already. So you've got a post, you know, you've got some text, and first off, the image is at the bottom. We're thinking, oh, okay, that's not good. That's really not where I want my image. When I was editing it, it looked like it would be at the top. So the first thing we want to do is potentially move this image up to the top. Okay, and how we're going to do that is by clicking Manage Display. And as you can see on the uh, default Manage Display here, we're on the default, we've got the body and then the image. So I want the image above the body. So I'm going to do that. Click Save. And great, there it is. Now the image is above the body. Well, it still says image above that, and I'm not too crazy about that. So let's go back to image display, or manage display, sorry. And here beside the image, we have a label. It says put the label above the image. And that's kind of tacky. We don't want that. We could have it in line, which means beside the image, which would be even worse. Let's just choose hidden. Okay, save again. Ignore my messages here. Okay, there we go. Now we have Bacon the dog, and he's got no label above it that says this is an image. Okay, the next problem is this image is a little bit big. Um, I might want this image to be a bit smaller. Okay, and we can actually do that with Drupal, and Drupal will make some smart choices for us if we tell it to. Now how we're going to do that again is choose manage display and on the image we have no label and the format is an image. Now it says show the original image. Okay. If this was a really huge image that we added it would take up the whole page. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to click on this little cog over here. And on the cog it's going to give us some more formatting options. And under image style right now it says none show the original image. Now we have some built in sizes that we can use and I'm just going to use a built in size today. So I want it to be a medium sized image 200 by 2 or sorry 220 by 220 picks. I don't want it to link to anything. I'm just going to update that. Make sure you always click update after before you save. And now it's 220 by 220, just the size we want. So for a lot of people, I think, who already have websites, they're at this point with Drupal. They're saying, okay, we've got a post, we've got an image that's in a field, but it's still not where we want it to be. It's just floating over to the left-hand side. And what happens if I want it on the right hand side? What happens if I want the text to flow around it nicely? How do we do that? Okay, so how we do that is by using CSS. And if you don't know what CSS is, go ahead and, you know, go to Google, type in what is CSS, and it'll give you a little bit of an explanation. But CSS is a little bit of the magic behind the scenes when it comes to layout, especially. It tells you what the text is going to look like. Is it going to be Bold, it's going to be not bold, it's going to be purple, it's going to be red, it's going to be on the left, it's going to be on the right. This is what CSS is doing for us. Okay. Now we're going to use CSS just to move this for now over to the right hand side. But if, even if you know a little bit of CSS, you're wondering, okay, how am I going to select this image? And what we're going to do is use Firebug, which we already installed, to do that. So once Firebug is in your Firefox browser, you can actually right-click on this image and choose Inspect Element with Firebug. Okay, we're going to do that, and we're going to get this pop-up at the bottom of the screen. And it's going to look like, oh man, what is all this information down here? Okay, and that's fine. We're just going to go through this nice and slow, and if you hold your mouse over these different elements in Firebug, they're going to show you what they're selecting. Okay, So for example, if we're choosing this div here with class submitted, you can see it's highlighting on the page my submission information here. 
Okay. So we're going to go farther down, farther down, farther down until we're selecting just the image. So here we go. And this one is class is field and also field name field custom image and also field type image and it also has a field label hidden. Okay. So the one we want to select is the name of this image specifically. So if you remember back, I named this custom image. Okay? This field is called custom image. So what I'm going to choose is field name field. So we're we're grabbing the field that's called field custom image, okay? Just select that part. Then I'm going to go copy. And now I have just that, okay? Okay, and I'm going to open up Notepad here just to paste this in. So I'm going to go paste. We have that field name, field custom selected. Below that, we want the field item. We want this one specific item. Okay, so in class, we're going to choose field item and copy that out. Okay, I'm going to put it right after this. So field name, field custom image, space, field items. So we're saying we want this field item within this class here. Okay. And to call up these classes using CSS, we need to add a little extra something, and that's a period that says call the class. Okay. If you don't understand any of this, it doesn't really matter as long as you can just follow along with these basics. Okay. And this is really the best way, in my opinion, to learn is just to follow along with the basics and some tutorials first. And once you've got that, then you can look up later why did that work so well. Okay, so now we, we know exactly what we want to select. So let's copy this. We're going to go back to Firebug and test this out to see if it works. Okay. So over here on the right hand side, I'm going to click on any style sheet. It really doesn't matter to me. It should say something something dot CSS. Okay, so we're just going to click on that. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Yoop. And you can see we have a bunch of other CSS in here already. But what we're going to want to do is go create a new rule. And then I'm going to paste in my CSS selector that we just typed out. Okay. And now it's created a new rule for us. Then I'm going to double click. And I'm going to type in float. Okay, and it's even going to suggest it to you. Then click tab, and I'm going to type right. Bam. There we go. So now our image is already on the right side. Okay. Now you might notice that my image around it already has some nice spacing, some nice padding that keeps the text away. Okay. This is built into my theme, so it's already there. Depending on what theme you're using, your text might be flush right against your image, which makes things look a little tacky. It's not the way we want it. So we would have to use a little more CSS to add a little more spacing. So say I want more spacing. Say I want it out to here, a nice big space. What we're going to do is go back to the same selector here and add a little more. We're going to type padding. hyphen bottom so we want to add padding just to the bottom then I'm going to click tab and I'm going to add say 30 picks of space in the bottom okay and now you can see it's added 30 picks so say we wanted more we can just click the up key I'm going to click up 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 you can see it's making more space below okay but we don't want that much let's just say we want 30 Okay, now to do the left hand side, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to choose padding, dash, or hyphen, then left, click tab, and type 30. Okay, 
So now we have got 30 pixels of space. Again, if I wanted more, I could just select it and go up, up, up. And as you see, it's going to add more and more and more space. Okay. So again, I'm just going to stay with 30. And that's it. That's exactly how I like it. You know, we can test out any CSS we want here. You know, we could say, do something ugly, like say, give it a background of red. And uh, you could see the, the spacing there. We don't want that though, so we're just going to remove that. Okay, so now you know exactly what CSS you want, but it's still not on your website. This CSS is just being displayed on your browser. Okay, so what we need to do is copy this out. So I'm just going to select and highlight it all, choose copy, let's go back to my notepad or whatever notepad you're using, and I'm just going to paste it in here for the moment. So this is the CSS I want. Now to apply it, there's a couple of different ways to do this. We could get onto our FTP, access our website, open up our theme folder, open up our CSS folder, and go ahead and paste it in there. So if you're familiar with doing that, you can go ahead and do that. If you're not, this is where the CSS injector module comes in handy. Okay. So previously we installed the CSS injector module, then we're going to go configuration, and under configuration development, we're going to choose CSS injector. And we're going to create a new rule. Okay, so we can give this rule any title we want. This doesn't affect anything except for what we see as the administrators. So I'm just going to call this my custom blog CSS rule so I know what it is. And then I'm going to paste my CSS in there. I'm just going to copy this and paste in the code. Okay, and that's it. So I want this to show on all my themes. I want it to be applied to every page. So I'm just going to save this. Now I want to go back over to the blog page that I just added. So it's called Bacon. And you might have to refresh this page once or twice in order to get the image to appear where you want. So now you can see here's the image way over on the right hand side with 30 pixels of spacing. So you can use this to basically move this image wherever you want. You can have it on the left or the right with spacing. If you use the manage display function we can have it on the top or the bottom with the left or right and whatever kind of space we want. I want to take a moment and just look at this CSS real quick in a little bit of detail if, if you are not able to implement it easily. So when we named our image field, and this is just a screenshot from the content type, and we had a title, we had an image, we had a body and when we added the image we gave it the name custom image so automatically Drupal adds a machine name and they add in front of your machine name field because this is a type of field so it becomes field custom image so that's where this comes from so when we're using the CSS we start with a dot then it's field name because we're looking for the name of a field and then it's field custom image so here we go field custom image so that's where this CSS selector comes from this class okay then within that we want dot field items because we want the field items that are within this field okay so now that we've selected the right thing, which is, you know, our little image, we could have a happy person here. Now we need to give it some properties. It selected this, but what is it going to do with it? We want to tell it to float, semicolon, right. Okay, so it's going to say float to the right. Then we want to add padding. So where's the padding going to be? Padding dash bottom. So this will say add padding to the bottom. Okay, we could add padding to the left, padding to the right, padding to the top, 
or even if we just wrote padding all together, nothing else but padding, it will add padding evenly around the entire image. Okay? So these just give the properties to this selector. The selector selects whatever it is on the site we want to select, and then we add properties to that selector. Okay? So that's just how this little CSS snippet works. Again, you can just copy and paste mine and uh, just tweak it a little bit if that's what you want to do as well. Thanks for joining us today and listening through this whole tutorial. If you want more tutorials similar to this, just visit us at drupal4anyone.com. And if you have any requests, go ahead and hit the Contact Us button, send us a message, let us know what you want to know all about. And if it's any good, we might just make a tutorial about it for you. So have a good day from Drupal 4 Anyone.